Some of the most famous artists worked in charcoal, and they did remarkably good drawings. In fact, a really good charcoal drawing is a most beautiful thing. Charcoal is black, but it's got overtones of blue and grey and brown in it. Well, mine isn't too hot. Plainly, I need a lot more practice, and for that, I need a lot more charcoal. And it has to be charcoal of the right kind. You see, this is artist charcoal. Each twig is black, and if you snap it open, it's black all the way through. It's just uniform, and it draws beautifully. If you go raiding a barbecue or a campfire, you'll end up with charcoal, pieces of burnt wood like this, but on one end they've gone to ash, on the other end they're still unburnt wood, and it's just a little bit in the middle that's charcoal, and it's unpredictable. As you work with it, you go from ash, through the charcoal, then into the wood, and you run out of mark. So that's pretty crummy. What we need to do is to take the whole twig and convert it into half burnt wood, the artist's charcoal. Well, if you just chuck that in the fire, it doesn't go too well. It just burns away to ash. We have to set fire to it and then keep the air away from it. And that traditionally was done by heaping earth over it. We're going to use a tin. And the sort of tin you need is this. It's an old coffee tin. Lots of things will do, as long as they've got a press-on lid of that kind, because that will clamp down and keep the air out of the stuff that we put inside. Well, we do need two little holes, not to let the air in, but to let the vapours out. And so we use a spike, like a big nail or a file or something like this, and bang a little hole in the top, like that. Work the file around to enlarge it to, oh, about that sort of size. One in the top and one in the bottom. And then it's ready to load with the wood. Well, to do that, turn it over and prise the lid off. And of course, you need to cut twigs so that they're going to fit inside the tin. Well, I've been working here with some secateurs, and this is gum. I don't know what it's going to be like. I'll test it. Notice that each one is short enough to fit inside, otherwise it would jam the lid up and we couldn't uh, fit it on tightly. Well, that's a bit of gum. This is a bit of broom. You can try all sorts of things. Vine is very good. And if it's too long, as I say, snip it off or break it off. And keep working until your tin is absolutely full of these little twigs. And that's the last one. You can see it's now jammed tight with sticks. And now I slide on that lid and that'll keep the air out. Look, for the next bit, do it with a campfire when there's some adult around, or get an adult to help you lighting a fire. That's uh, much safer. And do it on a day when it's nice and green like this, not in the fire ban season. But when your fire's burnt down, roll the tin in, and you can use a stick to poke it around. You want to be able to watch those holes as it's going. And then when it's nicely bedded like that, heap it up with a lot more wood, because you need that tin to act as an oven and really cook the stuff inside it. Well, keep that fire cooking and you'll see smoke and steam pouring out of the holes at both ends, and that's a good sign because wood is full of oils and liquids that catch fire in a fire, and they can't because they're in the tin with no air. So they come charging out of the holes, and sometimes they'll catch fire there. But you keep that going until all the gases have come out of the holes, and the fire and the tin are cold. And if you've cooked it properly, it'll come out like this. Beautiful and black, it'll have a real tinkle to it. And it'll be just ready to use as artist's charcoal. Thank mm -hmm. you.